Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. The segment's being brought to you by BooksGrowBusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate their consumers, to grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. We're doing a series of spotlights on remarkable experts across the country. Joining me on this segment is Amy Smith-Young. She's a broker owner of, of Florida Coastal Premier Properties. Amy, welcome to the program. Thanks so much. Tell us a little bit about Florida Coastal Premier Properties and who are the types of folks that you like to help? Well, a lot of our business comes from people out of town, out of state. They like the idea that we don't have the, uh, the different taxes here that we do in say California or New York specifically. Um, lately, we've been seeing droves of people coming down, moving to Florida. Um, they like everything about the Sunshine State so far. Uh, we do luxury real estate. We also do property management and we do vacation rentals. Excellent, so these folks that are coming in from out of town, what's like their number one challenge when trying to locate a property, you know, uh, outside of where they live? Just not knowing the area, and a lot of them, they've never been here before. So a lot of our business will come in, people will come in as a vacation rental, let's get the family away, you know, take them to the beach, and then they come and they fall in love with our coastline, just like I did. I'm originally from Tampa, and um, I came here one time, and that was it. I didn't care what it took. I was coming, you know, and there's a lot of people that feel that way. And then we also have local people that, you know, maybe they're selling their home or they're upgrading, you know, they're downsizing, what have you. So we're happy to help them as well. And we do commercial. So there's a lot of businesses that are coming to Palm Coast now. We're experiencing a phenomenal amount of growth. Now, the question that we get a lot nowadays, of course, is uh, related to the pandemic. Like, uh, I'd imagine in the beginning of the pandemic, it was a huge question mark of how this was going to affect the, the market. So we'd love to hear, like, the market update uh, on Palm Coast and how did it affect you guys and what's it like today? Sure. Well, at the beginning of the pandemic, we had a steady real estate market. I wouldn't say that it was either a seller or a bar, bar, sorry, buyer's market. It was pretty, pretty stable in terms of price and growth and things like that. And then the pandemic happened and the whole world went to Hades in a handbasket for a minute, you know, and while we're all regrouping, um, once the vacation rental business started opening back up and people started, um, you know, the, the bans were lifted for travel and things like that. We have, normally we have about a thousand people a day moving to Florida. Right now that number is 3000. So we have, a bit of a crisis, um, and I know it's not just our area, but specifically with us, we do not have enough houses to put people in. So we're having a lot of um, a lot of challenges in that to where the builders can't build the homes fast enough. A lot of the sellers, they could sell and it's a prime time to sell, but then they have to figure out where they're going. So that's been a challenge in itself. And that's where the experience and the trust comes in, you know, because a lot of these people, they're buying homes that they've never even seen. So they're relying on us to be their eyes and ears, you know, and a lot of properties will sell the same day it goes on the market, as soon as it goes on the market, because we've gone in and we've sent, you know, the information over and the people are like, get it, get it now. So we do. That, that seems amazing. And, and it does make sense because there's, I'm, I'm in Illinois and there's mass exodus out of Illinois now. So they're going to Nashville, they're going to Florida, Arizona, yeah. you know, all the popular, you know, places that people want to go. So sure. What like uh, I'd imagine uh, with this sort of seller's market, who who would want to leave? Like uh, who are going to sell their properties now? I can imagine a lot of people are holding on to it, saying, "Okay, this is great. I'm staying here." Like who right. wants to leave and, and sell their property? Well, a lot of the people, you know, their life changes. I mean, all of ours does. We go through things, and life happens. You know, good things, bad things, what have you. So a lot of people, they've just had, you know, in the case of selling, maybe they've got two or three properties, and they look at it that. Like right now, you know, they look at it like, hey, I've had these investment properties. Now's the time the market's hot. So like a lot of our property management has sold because they're looking at it like, I don't know when it's going to be this good again. We can't guarantee. Of course, we don't have a crystal ball, you know, so they're telling us, sell those things off and get us the money, you know, or you have people that maybe they're empty nesters, you know, their kids have moved away or whatever, and they're not wanting to keep taking care of a large house. So they want to sell that. They want to get into a condo or a smaller home for less upkeep, you know, or we have the people where they're growing, you know, their family, their friends, whatever they end up doing. Um, and especially in Florida, we have a lot of the uh, parents now that are living with the children because it just makes sense. You know, 
So they're combining houses and those homes are being sold as well. And they're getting a pretty hefty profit on. So I live in Illinois and the, the thought of, you know, selling above listing prices is, is hardly, hardly happens here. But I'd imagine with the inventory shortage by you, are homes selling at, at above listing? Is there a bidding war? Oh, absolutely. Just about every home. Um, it has in the past, I would say the past month, it's gotten a little bit cooler, but it's still, if you know, it's not like when it's a buyer's market to where you can ask for this and you can ask for that. These sellers, they're for the most part, they're just not doing them. They're not doing the concessions. A lot of times people aren't even asking for inspections, which makes it super appealing for a seller, you know, because it's here's what I'm willing to pay and I'm willing to pay it right now. So how could they not take it? So on that note, if you're a buyer wanting to be successful buying in, in the Palm Coast by you, um, what is their strategy? What would get them the best prepared to come in with the strongest offer? You better use the right agent. Um, I don't recommend anyone try to do it on their own, especially right now. It, um, you need someone that has the expertise, someone that knows the area, someone that knows the market, um, because we can advise you. We're going to do what you want, uh, you know, obviously at the end of the day, but our jobs are to advise you what's going on, how it's going on, how it's affecting our market right now. And the best thing anyone can do that's looking to purchase here is listen to their agent. We know what we're talking about and we're trying to help you out. So Amy, what inspired you to get into real estate to begin with and help others? How'd you get started? I actually, I'm gonna give a plug to my friend, Nick Shoemaker. She's one of my best friends on this earth. She is in the top 2% of real estate agents in the country. Um, she is a, located in the Nashville area and she's a good friend of mine. And I talked about, I was doing some building and some other things along in Tennessee. And I talked about getting my real estate license for 11 years. And she finally, because she's a friend and she's truthful, she says, you know what? I've heard this for so long. Everyone's told you, you should do it. She's like, I'm tired of hearing about it. Either get off your ass and do it or shut up about it. Move on. <laughs> and it, it hurt me. You know, when she said it, I was like, ah. But as the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? She's right. So I did. I got my real estate license. I had already found Palm Coast and, you know, I fell in love with it immediately. I didn't know a soul here. I moved to Palm Coast. I joined with a large major box brokerage. I started with a Remax company um, because I didn't know anyone. And I felt like I needed that big name behind me. Then it did help me. But what I found was people were doing business with me. They weren't doing business with the company. So from there, I just, you know, I kept working and I started another brokerage, um, Good Life Realty. And then a good friend of mine, Julie Mathis, she was with East Coast Premier Properties. Um, we talked for about two years about how we were going to do a partnership and how we were going to form it and just make sure that we had every kink we could possibly imagine out, you know, find out what the agents wanted and deliver that for them. Um, and I'm very proud to say that we definitely have the highest pay structure to our agents versus what they actually get for that pay structure. So it's been pretty successful so far. We're growing and we're, we see it as there's nowhere to go but up. You know, we're going to keep going. Well, congratulations on your success so far. But Amy, Thanks. now you didn't know anything about the area at all. Why did you choose Palm Coast to go to? I knew nothing. I was actually tra traveling from Jacksonville. I lived in Tennessee at the time. I lived in Knoxville and I knew I was relocating back to Florida. My father had gotten ill and I wanted to be close to him. So um, I decided I would just cruise down A1A through Jacksonville. And I had no idea where Palm Coast was. I'd never even heard of Palm Coast. Um, but as I'm going down A1A, I saw the intercoastal waterway on my right and the ocean on my left. And I just, I was like, I don't know where I am, but I'm home. That was back in 2005. And then in 2014, I happened to pump among Palm Coast again because I get lost in a box without directions and I didn't know where I was. So when I finally found it again, I'm like, you know what, this is it. And the place that I saw, you know, 16 years ago, um, the exact place that I saw is where I live now, the same building. Um, so it's kind of crazy how that worked out, you know, but if you believe in law and attraction, law of attraction and things like that, then you get it. Um, but no, I've made a lot of wonderful friends here. When I went through my own tragedy back in 2018 with losing my daughter and my grandkids, this community, I told everybody here in my family or everyone in my family does not live here. Um, and they'd come in, of course, and they were just amazed by the amount of love and support that I was shown people that I didn't even know coming in and out, you know, bringing food, bringing this, bringing that, bringing flowers. 
And I told them, I said, I know I'm in the right place. I knew that when I moved here, but the, uh, the community itself, we're not a large town, but we are growing. I would say that we're probably a small to mid-sized town. You know, we're no St. Augustine or Orlando by any means, but we're getting there pretty quickly. But the one thing that Palm Coast has that I love so much about our county in Flagler County is that people genuinely care and people genuinely want to see everyone else do well. You don't have a lot of the, the cutthroat look behind your shoulder, you know, someone says hello and you're like, what do you really want? You know, and that's more what the Tampa feel was for me. It's not like that here. You can be yourself and be authentic and everyone loves you for it. I, I often tell my audience when they ask me, Mark, how do I find the next opportunity? And I always say, well, you got to get on the road and go explore things. And you're like a prime example of that. You were just yeah. driving down the road and, hey, I'm home. Here's a place. Find your spot, yeah. All, all of a sudden, boom, you've got a booming business that you probably didn't even imagine in, in your wildest yeah. dreams driving from Jacksonville. Now, you're between Jacksonville and Orlando. That's where Palm Coast is. Yep. If you're looking at a map, um, pretty much everyone knows where St. Augustine is. We are about 25 to 30 minutes south of St. Augustine, right off of I-95. And it used to be, our city's only about 30 years old. So we're pretty new. Um, And then, you know, there's a little town called Flagler Beach that's about five miles from my office. And it's just, it's it's a magical place. It really is. And I'm not saying that because I'm in real estate. I got into real estate because I already loved the property here. I loved the place here, you know, and I want to share it with everyone, but I don't want them to come so quickly that, you know, we don't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> well, this program is going to reach a bunch of people from across the country and also in places like where, where Illinoisans want ex- exodus. So uh, I hope that this helps give you some exposure for Palm Coast. Amy, for folks that are intrigued by your area and would like to find out more, uh, how do they find you, connect with you, and, and learn more? Okay. Well, my office number is uh, 386-445-9288. Uh, you can always reach me on my cell phone. Text is best because it is. it has been crazy. It's uh, 386-316-3190. Or you can go to our website, finecoastalfloridahomes.com. And if you're looking for a vacation rental, it's atlanticoceanvacationrentals.com. Amy, this has been terrific. I really appreciate your great insights uh, on your area and, and the market update. And I wish you continued success for you and for your firm and for all of your clients. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Amy Smith-Young, broker owner of Florida Coastal Premier Properties. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done and published to educate their consumers, to grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.